Sorry, I was just having a little rest. I've had such a busy week at work. Whew. Sometimes you just need to lie down and give your body and your mind a chance to, to rest and rejuvenate, don't you think? You know, a couple of weeks ago, I got my second COVID vaccine and the nurse who gave me the shot said, you might have a little bit of arm pain tomorrow and you might feel a little bit tired. And if you do, you should just rest. Well, I felt great that night, but the next day, oh man, was I tired. I couldn't keep my eyes open. So the couch was my best friend. I took it easy that day. And the following day, I felt great again. So I guess sometimes rest can be really good. You know, do you ever get sick, a cold, maybe the flu, maybe you have a tummy ache and what do mom and dad say? Sometimes they give you special medicine and then maybe they say, you have to stay in bed today and rest. Yeah, or maybe you get to take your favorite blanket or stuffed animal and lie on the couch and watch TV for the day. You're resting. You know, Jesus knew the value of rest as well. He did. In fact, he used to tell his disciples how important it was to rest. One day, the disciples had been really busy following Jesus around, listening to him preach and helping him tell the story of God's love. Well, they were getting tired and Jesus could tell that. Jesus was wonderful at seeing what was going on with people. And he could tell that his disciples were getting tired. Well, he knew if he was going to use them to do God's work, they needed to have their rest. So he took, put them in a boat. Remember a few weeks ago, we, caught, we talked about the Jesus boat sailing across the Sea of Galilee? Well, this was one of those times. He said to his disciples, go get in the boat, sail across, and when you get to the other side, you can have a rest. We'll rest together. Well, what do you suppose happened? All the people that had been following Jesus and the disciples who were so excited about the good news, they saw where they were going and they got there first. And all they wanted to do was surround Jesus and the disciples and talk more and learn more about God. That's the other thing that Jesus had. He had compassion for people. Compassion is another one of those big words, but I bet you know what it means. Can you tell me? Kindness, yep, yeah, that's a big part of it. It's really feeling what the other person is feeling, isn't it? Almost putting yourself in their shoes and, and feeling sorry if they're hurt or sad or tired. And then sometimes it goes even a step further and it's not just feeling sorry for somebody, but it's wanting to do something to help. Well, in this case, Jesus saw that the people who had been following him needed him needed to talk to him and maybe even needed to touch him. They wanted his healing. So what did Jesus do? He put aside his rest for a little while and he decided instead that he would talk to the people and listen to the people. He had compassion for them. It made me start thinking about compassion and how I show compassion that I have for people. Well, Here's where I want to get some of your ideas. What do you think we could do if we saw somebody who needed our compassion, who needed our help to feel better? Well, you may not be seeing all of your school friends right now. I know it's been a crazy year, right? But this is summer vacation. This is your time to rest. Maybe you're not resting your bodies because you're probably outside playing all the time, but it's an opportunity for you to rest your mind. So maybe you're not seeing your school friends, but maybe you're seeing family and friends in your neighborhood. And what sorts of things might they be going through that we need to show our compassion for? Maybe there's somebody who's left out of a game, doesn't have anybody to play with. Well, what could we do? You're right, we could invite them along to play, absolutely. What if we go on a picnic and we see somebody on the, the next blanket or at the next picnic table who doesn't seem to have any food? Maybe we could share. That's having compassion. But more than that, it's having compassion with action. It's not just feeling sorry for people because that's easy to do. But it's taking that next step and it's looking for ways to help them. You know, personally, 
I felt really distressed and sad this past few months about all our brothers and sisters in the Indigenous community, the First Nations, Métis and Inuit. We're learning a lot about residential schools and about things that went on there. And they're not good things. And I was feeling really, really upset. And I was feeling upset because I knew that those children had suffered and that their families were suffering. But that wasn't enough. I want to know what I can do to make things better. Well, I, I can't change the situation and I'm only one person. But I went online and I looked up some resources of things I can do. And one thing I can do is write my Member of Parliament in the federal government. And I've done that just to say the government needs to do more. It needs to take responsibility, it needs to apologize, and it needs to say what it's going to do to make the lives for Indigenous people better. It's ridiculous in this country to think that some people don't have safe drinking water like you and I do. Well, I want my government to take action. So, what have we learned today? Well, we've learned that it's a good thing to take a rest sometimes. And sometimes when we're resting, we can think about things beyond ourselves. We can think about the wider world. Like me, thinking about the Indigenous children. You have your own ideas and, and things that you're thinking about. People you want to show compassion towards. So you're going to be nice and kind and forgiving and thoughtful towards other people. And then, while you're resting, think about ways that you can put your compassion into action just like Jesus did. Okay, that's our plan for this week. Let's talk again next week, friends. Have a great week. Bye-bye.